put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Spaceballs movie review. The titular species, the Spaceballs, led by President Scroob or something like that, played by Mel Brooks himself, and with the forces led by Dark Helmet, Rick Moranis as a Darth Vader spoof, the, their planet has an, a not functioning atmosphere now, so they have to go and steal someone else's air. Yeah, I bet you thought this was going to be exactly like Star Wars. And they've set their sights on the planet Druidia which has a functioning royal... Yeah, they're ruled by a king, it would appear. And so they plan to take the princess hostage and thus, you know, negotiate with the king to get... They, they need this code in order to actually steal the air from their functioning atmosphere. And so when Vespa, the princess, runs away from her wedding, she, you know, is soon intercepted by Spaceball One as the utterly humongous ship. It actually, the, the very first shot of the film of course, as a spoof of the opening of the original Star Wars is this panning shot across the entire ship, and it just goes on forever. Anyway, she seems to be, you know, getting caught by them, but the king asks the... Basically, the Han Solo of the movie. Although he actually also he doubles as Luke as well, but he's more Han Solo. Lone Star, played by Bill Pullman, and his associate, Barf, a John Candy who's basically made up to look somewhat like a dog. Actually, he's described as a mog. He's half human, half dog, half man, half dog. He's his own best friend. And, yeah, so he, you know, the, the king asks them to rescue the princess, promising a reward which they need in order to get out of their debt with Pizza the Hut. Or else Pizza is going to send out for them. And, yeah, that's, that, that pretty well sets it up right there. And, of course, the, the princess and Lone Star do not get along, because as many know, Druish princesses can be a real pain. I know, she doesn't look Druish. Actually, Daphne Suniga, I really, I probably butchered her name, looks really hot in this movie, you know. Anyway. This is a great parody, you know, it gets some things right that other parodies don't. For example, the leading actors are actual actors. I mean, they have comedic talent, which is of course also important, but they're actual actors, so it's not just watching a bunch of jokes, and then when it gets to, you know, I mean, any kind of a story, you do still need to have moments where you, you know, care and you're not laughing. This movie has those and you believe them because it's Bill Pullman and I actually don't know Daphne Sunil from all that much but yeah she, she does quite well I'd say. 
And, yeah, you know, I forgot to mention one character. The C-3PO for the movie is called Dot, and it's a female, which actually doesn't really change all that much, and the voice is supplied by Joan Rivers, so, you know, yeah, quite funny. This has a number of different kind of jokes and gags. There's a lot of, you know, very silly stuff, kind of slapstick and such. There are some great breaking the fourth wall jokes. For example, there's this running gag of merchandising being all of, you know, st stuff from the movie being in the movie, you know, like the t-shirts the and just all kinds of stuff. And actually, this has, for my money, the greatest breaking the fourth wall joke I have ever seen, at least in a professionally done movie. It's just, I, it's fairly early on, so I'm comfortable revealing what it is. Basically, at one point, some characters in this movie watch the movie. The, yeah, Spaceballs, the movie, they actually, and, and it's just, it's brilliant. That's actually, a lot of the humor is very verbal and having to do with, you know, plays on words and just the, the way they say things and, and stuff like that. The, the, the trailer also gives away the combing the desert joke, which actually just, even if you hadn't, even if you haven't got the visual to connect with those words, if you think about it, if you take those words literally, you can probably figure out what they're gonna do, you know. And there's stuff like that. And then we have, you know, Rick Moranis as... Obviously he's kind of tiny. And to compensate for his actual size, the helmet he wears is preposterously huge, you know. So it just, yeah. And there's this bit about how the, the hard breathing of Darth Vader is actually because he can't breathe in this thing, you know, so he actually spends a bit of the movie with the the visor up. I didn't even know the, the, that helmet had a visor. Oh yeah, in this it does. And, you know, that also helps him look a bit less threatening, as does Rick Moranis's, you know, and, and Moranis really does, I mean, when you think of him, you think of, you know, he kind of always plays a wimp, and there are wimpy aspects to this character, but he's also this kind of just tiny, insecure dictator type, and that's just priceless. That's really hilarious, you know, because he's just constantly barking orders and just, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. The... The story is not too bad, actually. That's also, you know, something a good parody movie should still have, you know, so that you can actually, you know... I mean, if you if you were to go over everything that actually happens in this movie, it is... It's a genuine story. If you took away all the jokes, I mean, it's not a great story, maybe, but there's a story there. You know, there's, there's a skeleton there that they added a bunch of jokes onto. And it's actually slightly interesting, if you actually look at it, it's basically kind of a fairy tale, just with the Star Wars stuff onto it. It's not really... Yeah, there's a lot of Star Wars in here, but the film is not just like Star Wars with jokes, you know. But they do spoof, I'd say especially the first Star Wars movie. But yeah, you know, the, this came out in like 87, so they had a couple of Star Wars movies to go from. And they actually do some Star Trek as well. The... And, you know, numerous other, you know, various... Yeah, I, I'm not really going to give away which ones, but if you watched movies, you know, in the two decades, excuse me, leading up to this movie coming out, then, yeah. Excuse me. There's stuff that they spoofed here, and really well. It's actually, you know, obviously one of the most important parts of the comedy is for it to actually be funny. And almost every single joke and gag in this actually work. And when it's 
when it's at its best, which it is quite a bit, I'd say at least half the film is friggin' hilarious. The wedding stuff is just gold. And there's just, I, I can't really give any of it away because I don't want to, you know, blow the jokes, but just, there's some real, actually, that, that phrasing reminds me, there are some really good, like, kind of sexual jokes here, you know. Mel Brooks does really good at, at those. But yeah, very, very funny film. The effects are mm, reasonable, you know, for, for the time, they're certainly reasonable. The... Yeah, I don't... I shouldn't give that away. And I'd also say that, you know, the characters and such, there, there are arcs to this, you know. the Sure, the, the princess starts out bratty, and, you know, the, the Lone Star starts out really resenting her for being as spoilt as she is, but, you know, might change. But yeah, it's it's also quite well paced. I I've watched this a handful of times by now, and it never fails to entertain. Yeah, I suppose that pretty well covers it. So definitely one to watch if you find that you can laugh at something like Star Wars and Star Trek. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.